This class is concerned with trait theory, looking at leadership and trait theory to see what traits may influence leadership. Now, trait theory is based on the idea that people are born with inherited traits. Now, we know that uh, people, generally speaking, are made up from what they inherit plus what they experience over their lifetime. So it's experiences, what we call nurture, and what they have inherited, their genetic makeup, which we call nature. So it's nature and nurture that, generally speaking, goes to make up the individual. But in the case of trait theory, we're looking at just what's inherited. The trait theory of leadership is based on specific characteristics of many leaders. So the traits, the whole quest for, for a, a theory here is that traits are identified against leaders, let's say industry leaders. And the observer or the researcher will then make observations and, and conclude that uh, certain characteristics are valid of certain types of leader because they've observed it in different leaders. It might be uh, that leaders have brown eyes and that means that let's say brown eyed people are more likely to become captains of industry. I'm just giving an example here. I don't know if that's the case. But what they're trying to do is to try and to determine the traits based on uh, observation, based on researches in the past. So it's trying to predict leadership effectiveness using traits. They're saying here is a set of traits and these set of traits are typical of entrepreneurs or typical of business leaders, let's say. Uh, therefore, if we find people who have the same traits, the chances are they will go on to become business leaders as well. That's the idea. Many theorists studying leadership traits have acknowledged similar characteristics that outline leader effectiveness. The characteristics could include something psychological, their propensity to do or act in certain ways, it could be demographic, it could be the age profile, people become good entrepreneurs when they come to 50 or 20 or whatever. Uh, it could be a split on gender, male and female. It could be based on personality or intellect. Do people with degrees make good leaders or perhaps not having a degree is a good thing? Perhaps people become better leaders if they don't have degrees and a lot of business leaders don't have a uh, higher level education. Task related and it could be social. So there are a lot of factors here but the idea is to try and identify specific traits with entrepreneurs and then to predict entrepreneurs based on the traits for the future. We'll talk more about this in a second. Stogdrill uh, outlined the following traits and skills necessary to identify a leader. So this was his take on desirable tr uh, traits for a leader. Well, as you can see it's quite a lengthy one so you can stop the, the video later and go back and write it down. But for the moment it, um, one trait is to, to adapt to changing situations, be able to adapt to changing situations to engage with social environment and activities. It's uh, to be an ambitious person who aims to achieve high and to have high self-confidence, to be assertive, cooperative, decisive, dependable, and so on. Full of energy, persistent, uh, to dominate and take uh, responsibility and be tolerant of stress. So it's a whole list of traits. Now, uh, looking at this list of traits, try to identify those in leaders, business leaders, and 
see what goes behind them and try to make a list so that it may be possible to predict future leaders based on that. The skills necessary, well, to be intelligent, um, creative, conceptually skilled, fluent in speaking and writing, knowledgeable, organized, persuasive, socially skilled. So these skills are desirable as well and if, if they crop up within the, the general population then the chances are there will be more business leaders according to this view. McCall and Lombardo in 1983 they set out uh, four primary traits by which leaders could succeed or fail and these are as listed here so moving from the long list we just had from the this doctoral long list we're moving to McCall and Lombardo we've only got it down to, to four which seems to be more manageable um, the four are emotional stability, admitting mistakes, good interpersonal skills and intellectual ability. So these traits they believe to be important in making a leader. Trait theory is its a naturally pleasing theory. It, it's somehow it's appealing to many people. Um, they, they try to think that individuals are somehow designed to follow their their parents and their grandparents <coughs> and go back into history and if if the grandparents were whatever the grandchild will be similar it may be the case it may not be the case but there is a temptation to think along those lines that um, certain families have a natural talent for whatever. It happens in politics. We get political dynasties. Uh, there were two President Bushes in America. Um, there are families that have uh, ruled countries, going from father to son and so on. Um, North Korea. Um, there's been family structures in politics in India and so on and so on. You can go across many societies and it seems to be that many people seem to accept it. it so it's a naturally pleasing theory. It, it fits with what what they think. Uh, it's perceived as valid and Empirical, I'm sorry that word is spelled wrong. Empirical research has been conducted. It should be E M P I R I C A L. Um, sorry, empirical is wrong. It provides a, a fountain, a foundation for individual assessment. So there are many so called strengths to this one. The weaknesses, well, the list of traits is very long. We can identify all sorts of traits physical traits, blue eyes, brown eyes, blonde hair, black hair, um, tall, short. We can identify lots of physical features. We can identify psychological features, the emotional stability, the ability to do quantitative work and the creative side and so on. So it's a very long list of traits. Identifying important traits, uh, traits for effective leaders can be difficult. Which ones apply? If you've got a long list, presumably not all of them will apply to every individual, so which ones do apply? And also, physical traits are not necessarily important within the business world. The, ab uh, the ability to run fast is not necessarily a good skill in business. A good skill in business may be to be capable of interpreting the accounts or managing a budget or innovating, research and development, not necessarily running or high jump or uh, 
having brown eyes or blue eyes. So the theory can be very complex. The implications of trait theory, well, provides relevant information in understanding le uh, leadership. Now I say it provides relevant information, I'll come back to that in a second. The theory is applicable in all types of organizations. Well, we can try to apply it in all types of organizations. Managers can use the trade theory to assess their performance and make any necessary changes. Uh, possible. You've probably detected um, that many people are not over uh, over enthusiastic about trade theory. We know that we tend to have traits and qualities from the grandparents based on the work of Mendel, the geneticist, who looked at, well, the biologist, who looked at breeding peas and worked out that we tend to follow grandparents. So that's fine. We also know that we tend to learn from experiences and we have nurtured. Otherwise, we wouldn't spend so much on education, perhaps. We would be born with all the knowledge. So we do have uh, a nurture part to our personality. And I think it's somewhat one-sided to consider trait theory to be an explanation of business leadership. It's very narrow. It ignores all the wider influences. And presumably going to business school is a good idea where people can study good practice and bad practice based on past experiences from, from various industries and businesses and sectors and production processes and so on. So trade theory, I think it's, it's a nice theory in some respects because it aligns with what people want to believe. They see a baby and they say, doesn't the baby look like its father or its mother or its uncle or whatever? And because somebody was su successful in business, does it mean that their children will then go on to be successful in business as well? Well, I think it's more complex. It's far more complex. So al although trait theory gets an outing as an explanation for leadership, I don't think we should place too much emphasis on it. Um, it's far more complex. People are far more complex. And I think theory doesn't, doesn't address all of the possibilities in the very, very complex world of the, the human existence. So it's worth noting, and it's worth doing, and it's worth trying to understand it, but I'm not too sure if it's got a lot of mileage. Anyway, that concludes this video, so thank you for watching.